you think 525 or 550 is the high, Damien? I've seen, and it depends on where you are and what state you're in, but for the average, you think we're pushing up at some point in the next couple of months at what will be the, the terminal high? So we think Brent prices have to go higher, uh, another $20. When you look at the U.S. gasoline market, for example, it's actually remarkable that the last few weeks, demand has surprised positively uh, despite those high retail prices. I think it just underscores that the momentum on demand is actually still quite resilient. And that's why the market is still in balance and it will take higher prices in our view and forecasts for the market to finally reach a balanced state. Which will be, just give me a ballpark, you, you know, we won't hold you to it, but will we hit $6 average? I mean, you know, mathematically, it's now 10, 15 percent higher. So that would leave us shy of six dollars, but still higher from here. I think the main risk uh, you have to keep in mind is when you're at extremely low level of inventories like we are today in oil, the risk is that you gap to the upside. You know, remember 2008, the 1970s, right? That's the main risk that we see is, you know, at some point, supply is just too low and you really got to hit that point of demand destruction. So not our base case, but I think it's a risk you can't overlook for this summer. And what do we, how do we gauge that? What, what, what determines whether, I guess I'm asking, what determines the, the elasticity with yeah. the American traveling public? They, are they flush from, from stimulus? Are they, have they already spent that? How's the savings rate? Are, are, do people want to go on vacation so badly that they're, they're going to do whatever it takes? Or, or will, will some people eventually say, no, I'm not going to do this? Yeah, so demand destruction is a gradual process, right? I think what's key is what you described heading into uh, this summer is your net disposable income is still elevated, you know, all by shrinking, but still sufficient to support demand. Furthermore, when you look at uh, traveling and flying in particular, you know, either you bought your ticket a while back or after several years of uh, being unable to travel, uh, you'll ramp up again. And importantly, you have to look at it on a global picture, right? The reopening uh, is just now ramping up in Asia and even China itself is reopening. So that's leading more support to oil demand on a global basis for this year. Now, in fact, you know, when you look at uh, the global market, I think the signs of demand destruction are probably to be looked for elsewhere than in the US initially. Right? The strong dollar is really putting more pressure on fuel prices in Europe, uh, in emerging markets. You know, that's where we're trying to find evidence. But again, so far, all we see is demand remaining above supply and inventories continuing to come down. In terms of trying to figure out retail gas prices versus uh, crude, what is the whole refining picture like right now in the U.S.? Uh, and, and how will that play into it? That's a very good point. We've actually never seen such a disconnect with retail trading so far above rent prices. So what drives that? Well, you've underinvested in energy across the board, so you're also uh, short on refineries. Uh, so you're running as high as you can on refineries, but you know that still is just barely enough uh, to meet demand. That won't get better for another year as you build uh, gradually but slowly more refineries again in emerging markets. So you know that's something to look out for. That that's a problem because you know any hiccup at a refinery, we just had one in Europe over the weekend, means you're further falling uh, low on inventories. You have a hurricane season that's always a risk in the U.S. So that's important because you could have all of a sudden more crude out of the ground, but actually doesn't solve what the consumer is facing, which is at the pump past that refinery. So that, again, takes more investment and a higher financial incentive to ramp up. So, Damien, if there were still energy producers that in the last year or so, last two years, were hesitant about long-term projects because of the uncertainty involved and, and didn't know if they wanted to risk their capital, is that changing now? Is it just too attractive to, to, uh, to not go for the uh, Every other time we see you know, uh, high prices will, will cause copper in the production to increase. It, it, it's always been that way for, for all commodities, that if, you, if price gets high enough, people are going to rush to try to produce it, and that brings it down. Will that happen this time, or, or is there, are there still headwinds which prevent people from saying, you know, I'm just still not going to, I still don't feel comfortable with the long-term prospects for fossil fuels, so I'm not going to do it? Or do you think they just go, go all out? The last point you made is key, right? We still don't know what oil demand looks like 15 years from now. 
And so when you're building this offshore platform, you know, it takes three to five years to build, you're producing for 20 years. So most of your payback, your returns are over that long-term period. Um, the uncertainty on the energy transition, the kind of you know, uncertain policy as well that will accompany it, you know, is it all renewable? Is there some support for hydrocarbon? Means you're still uncertain. So sure, the short-term returns are better, but that doesn't solve the long-term. And that's why in the end, when you look at where investment is slowing, it remains short cycle. And that remains mostly shale around the world. So you know, the US on a multi-horizon has a lot to provide to the rest of the world despite the uncertainty, because you know, to a short cycle producer, you're finally seeing uh, a compelling reason to invest. But again, that takes time. Uh, it's not immediate. Refinery is harder. It's a three to five year uh, build out as well. So you can make small improvement, but you just have to wait for other countries to ramp up their own refineries.